United States Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin says he's committed to a constructive and stable relationship with China. He's in Singapore as the first member of Joe Biden's cabinet to visit the region. And for a closer look, we're joined by James Crabtree from the International Institute for Strategic Studies. Uh, James, firstly, Lloyd Austin says the Indo-Pacific is a priority. That's a marked change from the previous administration, isn't it? I think that was a little unfair. I, I think they, they also talked about the Indo-Pacific. I, I think what people wanted to hear from Lloyd Austin was whether or not America was going to uh, become much more assertive and aggressive with China, the risk being that that would then destabilize the region. I think what you got out of him was a reasonably steady speech uh, he talked about the fact, as you said, he wanted a constructive relationship with China, but he talked about some of the problems China's creating in the region, the genocide in Xinjiang, the problems in the South China Sea. Um, and he talked a lot about friends and allies and partners, particularly here in Southeast Asia, and he talked a lot about COVID-19. So I think, in a sense, he was giving a speech that he felt the region wanted to hear, and particularly here in Southeast Asia. James, the Pentagon chief says that he wants a stable relationship with China. Do you think that this could provide an opening, perhaps, to ease tensions? I don't think so, no. I think that's quite unlikely. I mean, you know, stranger things have happened, but um, I think at the moment America is on a path for more competition with China. And the question is, well, how pointed is that competition going to be? So there were questions asked this evening about Taiwan. Uh, which the secretary dodged, um, or he didn't answer the question as to whether or not he agreed with others in the American military who've talked about a potential conflict over Taiwan within the next five or six years. Um, but, you know, clearly the U.S. is heading in a direction of trying to put more of its military might into this part of the world in order to deter China. That's something he talked about a lot this evening, this, the concept of greater deterrence um, and what really that means is a, is a military buildup in this part of the world in order to, to make China think again about any uh, more assertive action. So I think a rapprochement, no. What we're watching to see is, in a sense, how tough is America going to try and be with China? Well, you mentioned the word deterrence, and it could be perceived by China surely as agitation, couldn't it? I mean, how do you see this sort of playing out if both sides sort of start ramping up the rhetoric? I think that's exactly how China will see it. So when America talks about what it calls integrated deterrence, which means not just using its army and its navy uh, and its air force, but also cyber and space and other um, ways of, of trying to deter China from doing anything too expansionary, then yeah, China sees this as unnecessary escalation of hostility of trying to contain China. Um, and so you know that's the game that the two superpowers are playing. The trick for countries in Southeast Asia is actually, you know, some countries in Southeast Asia don't mind this. They, they actually quite like the idea of America playing a balancing role in the region, but they just don't want them to do it in a way that is too provocative so that the Chinese end up reacting. Um, and so that is the very delicate balance that America is trying to play in the region. There is certainly a delicate balance, but there doesn't seem to be any uh, potential for an ironing out of differences between these two superpowers, James. So what is at stake for the countries in this region? Well, I think it's possible to imagine a more stable relationship than there has been in the last four years. So under Donald Trump, things were very, uh, very unstable almost all of the time. Trump was always hitting China with tariffs. He was doing things with North Korea. Towards the end of his administration, he was throwing all sorts of punches at the Chinese in a kind of incoherent way. I think what you'll see from Biden is something different. It, you know, There may be heightened pressure, um, maybe attempts to deny China advanced technology. They might try to do more with Taiwan, but it's going to be more measured and steady. There's not going to be the surprises of the last um, administration. So in that sense, I think you know there, it, it, things will be a little bit more stable. I just don't think they're going to get any easier. Um, I, I don't think you're going to see the Americans back off um, in, in the way that maybe some in this region hope that they might do. James, thank you very much for your perspective on uh, the U.S. Defense Secretary's visit here. James Crabtree there of the International Institute for Strategic Studies.